Welcome into this episode of Coach's Corner. Jordan Woodruff with you. Great to have you along. Today's episode brought to you by First National Bank of Oklahoma. And we are joined today, nothing like talking outdoor sports when it's uh, 15 degrees outside. Uh, Coach of girls soccer, Mike Arnold with us. And uh, needless to say, you guys are practicing right now, but I'd imagine that practicing happening indoors. Uh, yeah, we've uh, Friday we had indoor practice. We're practicing today indoor, and then the weather's supposed to be nice for a couple days, and then... It's supposed to hit again, I think, Friday, and so we're going back indoors on Friday. So what's too cold to practice outdoors for your girls' soccer day? By OSSA guidelines, it's uh, 36 degrees. It's like if it's, when it gets to that temperature, you know, we'll shorten practice. Anything below that, we pull it indoors. You know, it's interesting because uh, with, like, football, they don't have that <laughs> requirement, for instance, right? So it's kind of it's kind of interesting that soccer has that. Yeah, and then watching the, the uh, NFL, the playoffs, and seeing they're playing a negative 26, I'm like, no, no. Probably the reason Mahomes' helmet exploded, too, by the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it could have been worse. They, if they had had that Bills game on that Saturday, it would have really been a crazy one there. It would have, there's no lines. <laughs> no lines whatsoever. <laughs> yeah. I did know a few people that wanted to go to that uh, Chiefs game up there. I was like, you know, if I was a true fan, didn't have a big drive, Maybe so, but I yeah, yeah I, I'm I'm not big. I, I'd rather be hot than cold. Yeah, I'm not a cold weather person at all. Yeah. So, well, uh, soccer will be here before we know it. First game will be a home game on March first, uh, and uh, that will sneak up on us before we even know it. We're hoping the weather is better by then. But hey, it's Oklahoma. You just never know. <laughs> yeah. But uh, tell us how you're getting prepared for the season. Well, we've got we've got a good group of girls this year. We've got a 32 out. Uh, I have six seniors. Um, you know, the weather and in this fall and then the weather up until now has been really, really pleasant. And so we've gotten on the field. We've gotten a lot of, a lot of practice with getting our formation and working basic fundamentals. And it's, uh, I think it's going to be good. It's going to be in a good season. Yeah, and uh, talk about those seniors. I know one's on the basketball court with uh, Kira Allison. She's yep. still – and she's so fast. Uh, any sport she does, and, you know, I, I just say because it's basketball season – uh, but she's one great soccer player you have, too. Yeah, she uh, she hasn't played uh, all through high school. I mean, she's played on the club team, but she hasn't played. Uh, she's played with the competitive team, but she hasn't played with us. And when I talked to her, she's like, yep, I'm coming. It's like, okay. Um, she's going to add a great dynamic to the team. I mean, it's a uh, speed. We've got, we've got like three or four seniors that are just downright fast. And uh, we've got a couple of them that have one that is signed to go already – uh, up and played JUCO up in uh, Cali County, uh, Adrena Gilbert. Um, of DD to get out of Dela Garza, which she's been talking with a few other schools. I don't know which direction she's going to go, but uh, I've got. I know she's going to be going somewhere to play soccer. And then we've got uh, four others that are coming in that are just make our senior class really a uh, well tight group. Yeah, yeah, and uh, those seniors going to make impact but talk about kind of you know we, we mentioned a few but talk about who kind of what you've envisioned the lineup going to be and of course that can change the closer we get to the season and like with with Kira coming in you know her touches and working with this group of girls like we'll see where she fits in you know starting 11 you know starting off coming off the bench and whatnot but uh you know we've got a few young underclassmen that you know we have a couple freshmen that have shown potential that you know one plays for the Olympic development team. Um, we've got a couple others that play club in other other towns right. that have came in, and then we've got a group of juniors and sophomores that have shown a lot of potential. That you know, there's three or four of the juniors and sophomores, and more than that, there's seven of them that have played started for me for the last two years. And so I mean, like it's not like there's going to be a gap in between the ones that are our seniors and our underclassmen, they're all, they've worked together. And so I do believe that we're going to, we're going to have a pretty, pretty good team. All right. We talked, you talked about speed. That's something you've brought up. Uh, when it comes to speed in soccer, uh, how important is that? Now you got to be able to dribble the ball with that speed naturally and put the ball in the right spot, but how important is that speed and how does it change maybe when you have a speedier team, what you do out there on the pitch? Well, we change, the big philosophy that I look at when we look at our conditioning is not just being able to go out and say, here, go run four miles, go run three miles. You're going to run three to four miles in a game. Yeah. Is the transitioning from a sprint to a jog and being able to go back and forth because it's not all just a dead sprint. Right. 
And so conditioning and conditioning it well, you know, is a key aspect for whenever we get out there. Picking your spots when to use that speed. Yeah, you burst, use the burst when it's, when it's applicable. And yeah. so uh, we really do try to influence the, the girls into thinking ahead. It's like if, if we've got possession of the ball, they can't score. So if we control it and move into, into spots where you're going to make good passes, there's like then we control the game. Yeah, truly, soccer. Your best defense is a good offense. And we, yeah, it is. And we work <laughs> a lot on just trying to get our, you know, our formation is key. You know, because if we run, if we're running a four-three-three, it's four defenders, three midfielders, three attackers, and making our the outside defense being able to push forward and our midfield be able to control the center is like then we can control the game. Yeah, and uh, that's a that's a big part. I mean, you look at a lot of soccer. Uh, it can be a one nil match, but the team that controlled the possession a lot makes a big difference. And you can say it's a little bit like that with some other sports too, but with soccer, you really see it because the uh, differential in scoring isn't nearly as high as a lot of other sports. Yeah. So uh, what do you, uh, what do you need to work on? What are, what are some of the things you've seen initially that uh, the girls need to work on this year? Well, we went, we've worked a lot on our first touches but it's being able to connect multiple passes, being able to work the ball around to the front, and then being, if we don't have it, being able to bring it back around, or being able to transition. Transitioning from offense to defense is a key aspect that we've got to get under control. Yeah, and uh, how tough can that transition be? Because, I mean, you have such a long field, and there's so many different things going across the field, and if that one person doesn't transition quick enough, that's a run out and a goal on the other end sometimes, right? Yeah, like you know, when we when we have possession, we want to spread the field out because we want to make the defense spread out so it opens up the passing lanes. When we get on, you know, if we lose possession and we're going into defense, we want to try and push our defense, suck our defense in to control the middle to where they can go up the outside, and then we can come out, attack it, and take it away. Yeah. So offensively, there, defensively, you always want to bring up the goalkeeper. I mean, that's that's the one thing. It takes the team effort on defense. <laughs> The other girls out there help tremendously by not putting the goalkeeper in a bad spot, but the goalkeeper throughout the season is going to get in a bad spot. So who do you got there, and what are they looking like this year? Well, last year we had Ava O'Neill, and uh, Ava was a wall. I mean, she was incredible, and we've dealt with some injuries with her. Uh, last year she uh, went in on a, a tackle, got a foot to the or knee to the head, had a concussion, she had to sit out. Then this year, she uh, during warm preseason or not preseason, sorry, during practice, she dove on a ball, didn't land on her, land on her shoulder, and it's kind of been hurting. We've got two. We've got Ava, and then we've also got a uh, Madison, and a uh, Madison McCall didn't play last year. She was injured, and so. She's about. She's back. You just need to keep goalkeepers healthy. I know. Saying. <laughs> but Madison's like looking like we're gonna have Madison stepping in and uh, you know using Ava as a backup. But both of them, you know, you think of in two keepers, you have they're competing for the same position. So you think there's gonna be, you know, I want the job, you want the job. Right. We're gonna fight for it. But it's not like that. Both of them knows like whoever's whoever I feel needs to be in there. They support one another 100%. And it's just, it's a good group of girls. Well, based on history of injury, they're probably both going to have to play quite a bit too, right? Yeah. So, and, 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 and also having two, that's good for a coach because, I mean, just like any position, you could have somebody a little better at maybe this than they are at that. And, you know, maybe there's a point where it's like, hey, let's make this change because you're a little better and this team does this. So, I mean, for instance, maybe you're better at defending corner kicks or so that there's a lot of, intricacies, I guess you would say, when it comes to soccer. Yeah, I, it's, you know, Madison's could be great on the field. Ava could be better at, you know, blocking penalty kicks. Yeah. If we have a game that comes down to a shootout right before end of regulation, I'll switch her in to help block to take the PKs. Yeah. So. All right. Uh, I guess the last thing for you, how excited are you about uh, this upcoming season? And, uh, it's so tough, you know, uh, with you look at the districts that you have out there and in 6A, there's so many great competitive soccer squads you're going to be against. And unlike some other sports, it's still four teams. That's it. That makes the playoffs. So you got to be in that top four if you want to get 
to that postseason. So talk about how excited you are and what your prospects are as far as maybe getting to that postseason this year. Well, this is the year that we redistrict. So our district this year, or for the next two years, it's a Owasso, Enid, Yukon, Putnam City North, Stillwater, Norman North, Broken Arrow, and us. Um, it was awesome to get Enid and Stillwater back in. No doubt. Because Enid, huge rivalry. I mean, there's the trophy that we should have got last year that, you know, we fell one goal short. And it's like, really, we go there and they we've got to show up. Uh, having Stillwater back is always a plus. And I mean, Stillwater should, I, I've always felt in all sports, Stillwater should be playing Ponca. That should be a good rivalry right down the road. It used to be. Yeah, and to bring it back up, I mean, I, I've talked with the head coach and uh, it was like, we need to get something started. Started back up. Um, with that, you know, I've got a great group of girls, uh, you know, Adrena Gilbert, I'll go through kind of the ones that are, you know, right there on the top, top of the line. Um, Alyssa Sullivan, uh, Casey Van Hoosen is a junior. She's helps control the midfield. Um, we've got an injury to one, uh, Danny Herder that, uh, just had her ACL mm -hmm. surgery. Um, Didi De La Garza, senior, just great up front and, you know, good communicator. Um, Emma Steichen, lovely ball control skills and, you know, just knows how to, wants to finish. She yeah. wants to be up there at the end. Uh, Jane Lawler, great def junior defender. Um, got, a, you know, Madison McCall, no, playing as keeper. Maddie Brofrey, another, another junior that, you know, speed, speed. Um, Melanie Schaefer's coming in that, that's a ODP freshman. Um, and then we've got Sinead Rab Sr., which is going to be another solid defender. And then we got a Tally Boyer, another defender. So we've got a really good core of defense and midfield, just connecting them to the front. And we're going to be, you know, we'll see what happens. Yeah, making the stop or making the goal in the key moment, too. Because like I said, the district, uh, it, it could be tough with a lot of those teams in there that have some really great history as far as what they've been able to do soccer-wise in the state. So yes, sir. It's, it's, and that's really any district. It's just tough. It, it, people don't understand how tough it is just to get in that top four sometimes in soccer. Yeah, 6A, it's like it's it's legit with soccer. Yeah, it is. So, hey, appreciate your time as always. Well, thanks, sir. And we'll talk to you again, I'm sure, real soon. want to say thanks to Chris for helping us out. It's been Coach Mike Arnold with Girls Soccer. And uh, this episode of Coach's Corner been brought to you by First National Bank of Oklahoma here in Ponca City. Jordan Woodruff saying so long. And until next time, go Cats.